This is the Bear Country Outdoors Barely a Podcast. I'm your host, Doug Joyce, and with me is James Forslund and Chris Cantrell. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Okay, we're back, guys. We're doing another podcast. We're uh, finally back here in the, the old uh, Cantrell Outdoors Natural Museum, and we have another special guest, Mr. Tier Simak. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's nice to be here. He doesn't know what to do with his hands. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Sometimes when I'm nervous, I put my hands <laughs> in my armpits. <laughs> and I, it's no one. <laughs> so, Tyr, we got you a woman's smedium. <laughs> Perfect. I used to Custom. work for Blackwater. Bear Country oh, Outdoors boy. presents... <laughs> Uh, a bear hunter's life. It's a custom one-off T-shirt, never to be reproduced again. I'll sign this later for you. You're welcome. Does that make it worth more or less? Um, it's hard to say. Jury's out. Right now, uh, I would get your hopes up. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Appreciate you might, it. You might want to put it away for a little while. It, it you know, it sponsored bounces. by Black Rifle Coffee. Yep. Yeah. I'll be down. Yep. It bounces on the market between zero dollars and zero dollars. So you know, <laughs> I think I think you're in the negative on that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, we yeah. lost. We may have lost a little bit on this one, but yeah. You I, know what? I very recently overestimated my, overestimated my worth. I threw up a an old aid bag on eBay, thinking, oh, somebody's really going to want this. Like, right. this thing's been through like some conflict. It's seen some shit. Mm-hmm. Might even have some blood on it. Who knows? But it was issued to me. It's London Bridge, so, you know, a lot of Airsoft fan boys really like that. Right. But uh, it was issued to me in 03, and so I've used it. I used it for a year in Afghanistan. I used it in the Philippines. I don't know where else I used it. It's been a lot of places. Zero bids. <laughs> Two what? watchers. What the hell? I know. What is wrong with people? They're, they're, they're buying so no freaking good pokey, American quality. Pokemon card originals for $10,000, <laughs> but you won't buy a piece of natural history here right american history american american history, american history. do you yeah. still have it yeah would you take half a coors light for it <laughs> i mean that's that's, that's <laughs> better than nothing that's, right that's the top bid right now so <laughs> <laughs> one third of a coors light now. one third <laughs> it's a good deal it's a good deal one special edition bear country <laughs> outdoors a bear hunter's life t-shirt right. <laughs> So, Tier, tell us, tell us a little bit uh, about yourself. Uh, I'm originally from Oregon. Um, That's too bad. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no sales tax, but... Yeah. Come on now. Make Don't ruin it. it. I mean, shit. Sorry. Joined the Army when I was 19, and I've uh, lived all over ever since. And I uh, don't really have a, a typical Army story. Okay. Um, I uh, originally joined to drive tanks so I could get out in two years and work in Mount Hood again oh, because yeah. the coolest job was a snowcat operator. Oh, and nice. I figured if I could drive a tank, they'd have me where to you're be a snowcat try and get, Dude, yeah. Mount Hood is a great place, by the way. It, it is a great place. Intervene, yeah. intervene, that's one of the best places I've skied is Mount Hood. Yeah. If yeah. it wasn't in Oregon, it'd be awesome. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's no sales tax on the lift Tim- tickets. Mm. Timberline <laughs> Resort, yeah. that place is dope. Yeah. Like... No, but yeah. sorry. Yeah, so no snow cat, no snow cat. Yeah, I had kids while I was uh, in that enlistment and kept reenlisting, and uh, um, I uh, actually didn't drive tanks much either after I left Fort Knox. Um, I got to Fort Hood, now Fort Cavazos, Texas, and um, I tried out for this horse mounted unit, and uh, I did that for. Four and a half years or so. I didn't even know that was a thing yeah. that you could do. Yeah, it's a literal dog and pony show. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a horse unit. Yeah, so I rode horses for the Army for, for private from private to sergeant. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a cool job. That seems like a pretty cool job in the, yeah. in the Army. Except for that, you know, thing I talked about on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, I don't if know you if go to you know, worse, Red Leader Standing By, uh, Google the Bean, and you'll know what we're talking about. <laughs> You're welcome, Internet. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> For all you fanboys out there, go check it out. Yep. Yeah. Moving on before we get banned. you're a big fan banned. of dicks, <laughs> 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 Have we got a story for you. Uh, True story. Yeah, the downside of cowboy. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. So uh, I left horses 
and horse dicks and uh, <laughs> went back to an armored battalion, decided that I didn't like the regular army all that much. And uh, so a buddy of mine from the rugby team that I was playing on was trying out for special forces. I didn't really know what that was about, but I decided uh, if I didn't try, I was always going to wonder if I could have made it. So mm -hmm. I went with him. I made it which is good because I've got friends that have tried like three times, made it on that third try. There's no way I would have done that a second time. Really? <laughs> I would have just called it, so I'm good. <laughs> I, I personally have no idea what that entails. I don't think any of us do. I'm soft as shit. Let's just put that <laughs> Not soft there. as shit. Yeah. Special Operations Forces. No, soft. not definitely not yeah. that. <laughs> not even Well, you've heard that. of BUDS, right? Yes, on the internet. Yeah, so yeah. think of like BUDS, yeah, maybe yeah. SEAL training, okay. but make it harder. Are you tougher than David Coggins? He told me he was. He, <laughs> he carries the boats. He can't hurt me. Okay, okay uh, I'm just shots saying. Shots fired already. Shots. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. S F A S. Special Forces Assessment Selection. I, I do have some SEAL friends. Okay. Shout out to Terry Hewen. Great guy. Trevor Thompson. Great guy. Uh, Andy from Half Face. Great dude. Yeah, please don't kill me. The rest but, of them are, yeah, yeah whatever. JK, <laughs> just, just, just jokes, fellas. Yeah. Yeah. Terry would kill you, but you'd never know it. Like, he would, he would just, he would sneak in, disguise himself as a, a yard gnome. <laughs> a yard and, gnome? Yeah. And that would be his, that would be his hide. And then he would, he would just snipe you from whatever, you know. That's Terry's, fair. Terry's a killer. That's fair. fair. That's fair. 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 <laughs> Love you, Terry. Uh, they're all harder than yeah. me. Thank you all for your service. Yeah, yeah. you got ni you got nice feet. Please don't shoot me. Yeah, <laughs> we're on the same team, guys. SFAS uh, Special Forces Assessment Selection is is three weeks long, and uh, it um, you start off with just a standard Army physical fitness test. Nothing hard about that. Even with that, in my class, there was three people that quit at the PT test because it started raining. Really? Yeah. It's because of rain. Yeah, it was cold. It was cold and wet during our PT test, and three three candidates decided they didn't like that. So, so they, they weren't. They, from mu either. they must be from where it's desert. Yeah, not Washington. <laughs> Definitely Oregon, not that's Washington. For sure. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's always wet. You ain't like, gonna yeah, make it whatever. up here. I can tell you that. It was raining six months out of the year. Oh yeah, I used to hitchhike to <laughs> yeah. to the mountain every day. Yeah, from Gresham. So it was, you start off in rain and end up at snow. Um, <laughs> I'd rather deal with snow, to be honest with you. Well, yeah, absolutely. That, that's when I knew I was, I mean, that was, that was kind of the break, right? Yeah. yeah. When you're good. Yeah. I'm out of the rain. Now it's snow. Yeah. yeah. I got a funny story about that, but let's <laughs> put a pin tell. in that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you do your PT test and, and a swim test and there's people that don't pass a swim test as well. A swim test is just swimming 50 meters in full uniform and boots. Huh. Uh, which honestly is not that easy because no. boots were not that made to be hard. swum in. Yeah. yeah. Swam, 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 swam. I think technically it's swam. Sw I, I, I would say swimmins. Swimmins. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Which is the Goggins on that one. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Goggins. This yeah. episode is brought to you by Coors Light. <laughs> Coors Light. <laughs> we're still uh, waiting for that sponsorship, by the yeah, way. Yeah, right. It's uh, it's the silver bullet, which as a medic means something completely different, right? Yeah, hundred <laughs> um, percent. Yeah, so you do that, you do the regular stuff, you do the swim test, and then uh, you go out to Camp McCall, and uh, the first week is a lot of, um, it, it's a lot of. There's a lot of like IQ tests, personality tests, things like that. But with that, you're also doing. Uh, individual events like uh, individual timed runs and you don't know how long these are so if you you know if you were a cross-country runner or something like that and you know what your 5k time is versus a 10k time you've got no way to pace yourself because you have no idea if you're doing a two mile run or a 10 mile run so they just say start running and then mm -hmm. you just stop when they tell you to stop yeah you're shitting me yeah what a bunch of dicks that's a terrible thing <laughs> <laughs> isn't it no, it's great. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Super, super. Remind me not to do that tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's really no way to pace yourself. It's a big mind game. Uh, huh. You don't have a name. You have a number. Um, what was your number? 255. Five. Son of a bitch. This guy's sharp. 
Yeah. Well, Scoot there's there's some things that I'm trying. There's a lot of things yeah. <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. That's probably one of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, two five five. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, once you get through, and there's also land nav in selection. Uh, and sometimes this is in selection. Sometimes I put it in the Q course, but um, there's de- there is definitely land nav in in selection, and uh, it's when you find out that people you can't use a flashlight other, for anything more than checking your map. Mm. And it's most of it is at night. Huh. So you find out who's afraid of the dark. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of dudes that are afraid oh, of the yeah. dark. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That shocks me. Yeah. I feel like really? as a man, you really, should don't Don't look at that me like that when you, you say you, that. I, I'm looking at Chris like, are you afraid of the dark? Jeez. No, I just literally, I at my, I walk out at my old age. Yeah. I, without a flashlight. Yeah, like f- probably... 43, I could not see in the dark anymore with my eyes. Just mm. like, I swore I used to be Batman, and I could see in the dark. That's your neck. neck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> True story. True story. And then next thing you know, here I am. 44, can't see shit. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I, I, just think just, I think that's just age. Chris. Oh, do I? Hey, you, if you need some, I got some two O's in here. You need some? I'm looking for those transition lenses. Like Are the you? Progressives, yeah. Yeah, see those. I'm always packing. See when I when I wear these, I look like. I like to wear them down a little bit. Chief, like I'm like. I do the same thing. (laughs) Yeah. I'm we should tired of going to the commissioner for you. I'm gonna need your gun and your badge. I hate to do it. I hate to do it. Uh, We're totally doing karate in the garage later. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Same. So once you get past those individual events. You go to the real ball buster, which is team week. <clears throat> team week, you can guess how long that lasts. That a a team? Yeah. It's about a week, yeah. Oh, okay. Somewhere in there. Yeah. So they split you up into these, uh, into So you got to carry a lot of people, ODAs. basically, right? There's carrying, it's it's a lot of problem solving. Yeah. There's typically two events a day. Uh-huh. Um, sometimes they start right there at Camp McCall. Sometimes you have to ruck there first, and then it starts. But... Uh, there's always some guerrilla resistance force that needs your logistical support and you have to get something that's really awkward and heavy that they really need to complete their mission to them. And for some reason, all the roads in Pineland are made of sand. You think that that would have been one of the first things I would have done is I would have petitioned the state department for infrastructure. Like we need runways and we need paved roads everywhere. But in Pineland, that's a fictional country that we're we're helping right. out. I was gonna say it's for the like, last well, where forty years. Yeah, I was like, where where, <laughs> are we, years. where have we been fighting for the last, <laughs> for the last you know, fifty for years? Like, yeah, yeah. Pure sand and desert. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Yeah, and we do have a habit of blowing up roads before we get there. <laughs> <laughs> and bridges and right? bridges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, you're being evaluated on uh, how well you can lead, how well you can follow. Um your problem solving abilities, how well you can integrate into a team Mm -hmm. under a lot of stress. Yeah. Because you're under not only physical stress, but you have a time standard that you're supposed to meet for these Mm -hmm. missions. And it's not just the cadre that are evaluating you. Uh, It's also your, your peers that you're in selection with. We had, I think three guys on my, my team in team week that didn't make it because of peer evals. How big are the teams? 12, 12 guys ish somewhere yeah. in there they yeah. totally vote me off the island <laughs> <laughs> not on the down dareman no no we need a monster like you and the down dareman drill i don't know what that is but yes thank <laughs> you <laughs> yeah anybody hopefully that's, that's not where I'll, we I'll take anybody, that as a compliment anybody right? that's watching this is sf's going oh yeah yeah, oh, definitely. yeah. 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 <laughs> he is the down dareman <laughs> <laughs> you are the brute squad <laughs> yeah <clears throat> so yeah i got done with selection i i uh I got selected uh, that first go around, which surprised a lot of people, uh, not least of which me. Um, and uh, I, I went to Fort Bragg, now Fort Liberty, six months later. But I got out. Uh, when I say I didn't follow traditional army routes, I mean, there's the horse thing. And then there's I decided to go to special forces. And then there's I decided to get out of the army after I was selected. Because I didn't, it was peacetime. I went to the selection in 99, and I didn't want to spend the rest of my career 
in North Carolina or Kentucky because I'm from the Northwest. Okay. Mm-hmm. I wanted to get back to mountains. Right. So being brand new, they're not going to guarantee you Fort Lewis or Fort Carson. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the only way to guarantee that for myself was to get out and go to 19th Group in Buckley, Washington. So I did that. And uh, I did most of my career out of uh, out of Buckley or uh, or Fort Lewis. Hmm. Nice. And that's been both <clears throat> awesome and terrible. When I say terrible, it's there's no there's no safety net for for the National Guard. So, uh, despite having all but five years of my my career in in the National Guard, I have over 17 years of active federal service. So we've been really, really busy. But between those orders, there's, you know, somebody that's active duty, <clears throat> they finish up a deployment, they come home, they're still getting a paycheck. Mm-hmm. I just came back from Iraq. As soon as my leave's up, I'm on leave right now. As soon as my leave's up, I don't have a paycheck from the Army anymore. Granted, I've got a full-time job, so I don't have to worry about yeah. it too much. But, but yeah. yeah, if I didn't. If you didn't, yeah. You, <laughs> right. You, You'd be sweating bullets, literally. The the positive side of that is I've been able to pick and choose my missions a lot, and uh, there's some really cool stuff I've done in my civilian career that that some of it I can't talk about, but it's, I mean, 30 years again, I guess I can. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I've done a lot of stuff that, um, I don't know, I mean, I don't read... I don't say this to build myself up because a lot of it is just uh, putting myself in the right spot. But uh, I don't read, I don't read fiction anymore because it's boring. Mm-hmm. You know, because you've already, you've lived through so much yeah. stuff. That is, yeah. yeah, and that sounds super. I don't know, whatever, conceited, right. something. But it, it's just the case. You've like, done it. Yeah, so like I loved Tom Clancy books mm-hmm. when I went to the Q course. Right. And uh, I was a voracious reader when I was in the Q course. And then, you know, I deployed to Afghanistan almost immediately after the Q course. I had a few months off. I was working as a bouncer in Seattle. And then I went to Afghanistan for a year. And uh, I did a lot of stuff in that year. And that was 2003, so it was still pretty early. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was just – and I've, I didn't really stop until 2010. Um. I was just bam, 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 which is not recommended, by the way. That's right. that's how you lose families. That's how you uh, start to let your your mental health go and, and everything else. Um, but that's that's what I was doing. I was chasing that dragon. And uh, the first time I really stopped to take a knee was in 2010 when I started teaching ROTC at University of Washington. Wow. Yeah. So I did that for a couple of years, and then I went back to the back to the shit. Back to the shit, as yeah. I say. <laughs> yeah. And why'd you go back? Sequestration, actually. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, what's really fun about uh, Congress is that when they start bickering and talking about shutting the government down because they can't agree on something, uh, they still get paid. Mm-hmm. Anybody else that's getting a federal paycheck is... Hmm. So write your representative and say you would like... The rules changed for when the government shuts down, they don't get paid either. And maybe they'll stop doing it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. I'd be a big fan of that. Yeah, yeah 100%. I think that's that's totally fair. Yeah. I I've, mean, if you think about it, in any other workforce in the United yeah, States, stuff gets shut when down, you don't move and you're not doing your job and you're not taking no care of your paid. responsibilities, you're not getting paid. Yeah. yeah. It's just that simple. And I don't know why we have put them on a pedestal that they get to live by their own set of rules, but I think that's fair. I think tear just came up with a new theory <laughs> that everyone in America is probably thinking. Yeah. It makes sense to me. Vote yeah. tier for governor. Yeah. No, don't do that. I'll, <laughs> you know, I'll, all kinds of shit would come out. I can do that. Uh, I mean, dude, there needs to be a lot of shit changed in the I, state. I'm, I'm uh, I'd be buddy. all for oh, it. As I, I previously I put you that. there in front of <laughs> Bob Ferguson any day. Oh, of- yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you that. I'm a sideshow Bob, yeah, of course. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm. Don't get mm. Chris started on this. I'm yeah. holding back so bad. <laughs> no, right you now. are. You have no idea. I was listening to uh, to Biden's uh, speech from uh, Normandy 
on the way up here just get oh, mad. And then I started oh, thinking yeah. about when I was in the army with Semi Bird and thinking, nope, I would never make it. I'd get past like one primary and they'd Google one thing like, hey, <laughs> did you? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was me. <laughs> I know. We, we were having that conversation. I'll, I'll see myself out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, they're always digging up some sort of dirt on somebody all the time. And if you don't have a squeaky clean record on well, everything. I don't think it's a squeaky clean record. I think it's like, to be to be fair, not to talk to poorly about our sitting president, but I think he's a sack of shit. <laughs> um, and I feel like he has no idea that he's a sack of shit. He's just so like. He doesn't have an idea about anything. Yeah, he doesn't, so, he doesn't yeah. know. Well, didn't he shit his pants over <laughs> what, there? What day? <laughs> what when? day? How many Every times day? in a day? So well, that's and that's key because if it, Willie Blazer, owner of Willie's Distillery, yeah. told me when we were in the Q course, yeah, very important information. He said you can shit your pants twice a year before you lose cool points. <laughs> two, twice two a times year? a year. Twice a year. Wow, I didn't even know you had. Two I got times. some points. I thought it was one time because I am so cool right There's now. There's no rollover. There's no rollover. There's cool no points. rollover. Oh, you get two annual. Okay. So yeah. Otherwise, okay. I'd have them stacked up. All right. I was gonna say, dang it. I didn't know that. I didn't know what he was talking about. I was like, I, I would think you would lose it after one. He's like, no, right? No, just yeah. Like, he'd done a lot more. He came from Ranger Battalion. Then he was a hot shot firefighter, oh. and then he decided to be a Green Beret. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so he's that guy. He'd had plenty of opportunities to shit his pants, whereas, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't really. I, Can you we, imagine? I mean, I was riding horses through the army. If you shit your pants riding a horse, oh, you're oh, dude. just sitting in it. That you don't really want no, to. Dude, no, we've pissed ourselves before. That's Texas. It's hot. You know, <laughs> it's but, air conditioning yeah. for your legs. We do that almost every podcast. So yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> It's not a big deal. If you ain't cool. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Willie and I went to Afghanistan together right after that. Right after. We, we graduated roughly the same time and uh, ended up on the same deployment. And I lived off the local economy eating Afghan food, and I, I learned really quick. Yeah, there's you need at least two. Really? Yeah, you need, <laughs> you need two. I could imagine. Shout out to uh, Willie's Distillery. Shout out to Willie's Distillery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's Montana. We were just briefly talking them. about that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where I hunt in southwest Montana, uh, you loop around, and there's a little tiny town of Ennis. It's super cute, super cute town. Mm-hmm. And the coolest place in town is Willie's Distillery. Yeah. And I remember driving through and going, I think I saw that on the internet. You know, like, I should stop there. I think it was probably like a tuesday night or oh, something we're gonna like stop that. there this season for sure yeah. yeah oh for sure drop my name see if they throw you out yeah <laughs> tear said to come I'm, in here i, <laughs> I, I said I, we I, could have all no, we dude. wanted <laughs> one of those nights when we were at the black rifle the, doing the black rifle thing we were sitting down and i think we had way too many cocktails and willie was the last man standing and it was me brett and willie he's good at that oh yeah and we and me and brett are just telling him all these boring stories and he's just like whatever you guys like just let, let me go to bed <laughs> but if you walk in there the, one of those hats is hanging in there is it really yeah uh shout out to eagles and angels this is actually tears uh one of his uniforms that they made into a hat for a what what exactly is it that they do like donate to uh it's up to the it's usually up to the uh the okay hero. So, okay yeah. yeah so they they pick you pick your own yeah so I've, non, I've had two hats. They've done three things of mine. They've done two hats and and a uh, a notebook cover, and I forget which one this supported, but I think it was either SOC F Special Operations Care Fund mm-hmm. or Hunter Seven. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. I mean, they literally take a piece of your uniform that you wore, mm-hmm. and then they cut these squares and then they embroider them into the or not embroider them, but sew them into this patch into hmm. the hat. Yeah. And then they, they sell them at a, you know, an escalated rate so that they're sending money off to yeah, this nonprofit. Yeah, it's a donation for a Well, fund. they sell out for a good really cause. fast. Depen- depending on, I mean, like Tier, he sold out super fast. Some of them don't sell out as fast, but he's super popular. So I was lucky enough to get one. I like to I like to watch that when other other hats are released. Like, it sold You're out like, did, they, did it sell out that fast? Nope. Now, how many hats <laughs> did you get out of it? I got two. You, just two hats were mm-hmm. made? Yeah. No, 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 no. They make a, a whole batch. Yeah, of them. that's what I'm saying. 
They gave a couple of them. Oh, and okay. what's the yeah, company called? Too. Eagles and Angels. Mm-hmm. Eagles and Angels. It's a retired uh, Army guy. Uh, he, he's, he's Is really, he watching this right now? No, he, but I'm sure he's he not will, watching it right now. He will, because I'll tag him right in now, Chris. Yes, I mean, geez. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, no, the reason I say this that is live is, right now, Chris. The reason I, yeah, you know, he's watching. Live yeah. from he, Chris's hey, basement. Don't, guy, don't mess dude. up the magic of what I got going on down here, all right? That's what I'm good at, though. The reason you know? I say this is, is I'm almost a size eight, and because I, I got all this brains and, and no hat to put them in. So if you want to come out with a bigger size hat, I would love to buy one of those hats. You can make like a, a big foam cowboy hat for you. I'm, hey, whatever it takes. With the matching finger. You know? You make a helmet. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> hey, you guys. Slop, I get it. Chunk. Slop. I get it. I get it. But yes, I'll buy one. You're going you're gonna to live with me now, Chris. <laughs> That's one of my favorite memes, by the way, is when they put it in there like, you're going to come live with me now. Why does everyone send me that meme, by the way? <laughs> everyone sends that to me. I send it to, it to you every time. Everyone. Uh, it's yeah. Just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm working on it. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Having fun. It's worth having fun. So what exactly are you doing right this second? So you're not... <laughs> drinking these beers. You're drinking at this table. <laughs> Outside of just so, us being I, here. I just came back from uh, an active duty stint. I was over in Iraq on uh, Operation Inherent Resolve with uh, USASOC, uh, Army Special Operations Command, doing some sergeant majoring. Uh, I, w- I was not hunting down bad guys or doing anything cool because my rank uh, means that I answer emails and make sure that... Uh, Everything, men, women, people, equipment, beans, bullets, all that's accounted for. He's right. lying. He's doing way cooler stuff than that. <laughs> He's totally lying. What, which would you rather be doing, though, to be honest? If I'm going to be downrange, yeah. I would I would rather to have that. You'd rather that, be in that the field. challenge. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anybody, I any like- SF guy that says, oh, no, I'd. I, I, I love being a sergeant major. I don't, it's I don't, full of shit. Yeah, I don't know if like in any kind of like situation or job would you want to be the guy that's in the office. Yeah, I, you know, there's a lot of guys that don't have a warrior's heart, dude. That don't want to like take the risk. <laughs> What's well, that's true. That's true. But you need those guys too. Mm-hmm. Honestly, um, you can't you can't turn everybody into a warrior. You can't turn everybody into a leader. If, if somebody wants to be support and some support are some badass warriors too. Yeah. I've had that too. But if somebody wants to be support and they want to excel in that, more power yeah, to you. Yeah, I, I don't agree. want to do that job. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And for every gunfighter, it takes about three people. In, I was going to say, you need those people. Effort. You yeah. need the support people yeah. to do your job. Yeah. The, the people that are a pain in the ass are the the gunslingers that uh, are either afraid or, you know, have kind of tiny heart syndrome or, <laughs> or the support guys that had the opportunity to go out and really support the mission, but are too busy talking up their attachment to special operations or something like that. You know, those, those, that's, that's the pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. And there's a third kind of pain in the ass, which I'm guilty of, which is the guys that don't know, uh, when they're broken or when to quit. Mm. And that can hurt the mission too. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Well, there's Absolutely. a, there's, I'm sure there's a lot that goes into that and there's a lot of people that suffer from all kinds of different problems and family uh-huh. life problems and PTSD of some sort. And I'm not here to call you out, but I'm guessing you can't type for shit. Oh, I actually type very well. <laughs> dude, Bullshit. he's 60 Tier is a writer, dude. <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah. With a pen. No, With a calligraphy didn't. pen. <laughs> he's dipping in ink. He's as old as I am. Just Martha. You know? I was adding Tetum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we finally have a guy on that's as, you know, matching my age structure here. Yeah. Mm. Not you puppies over there. Oh, Ulysses says oh, we'll, yeah. we'll take it. Chris. We're going over the hump tomorrow <laughs> to meet the boys in gray. I fear I may not make it back. Uh, uh, that's, that's, pretty, good. that's pretty damn good. That's pretty good. Are you taking it back to the Civil War or what? Yeah. Hey. Hell yeah. Hell? You know? I mean, most of the wars I've been in have been come some kind of Civil War. Uh, yeah. Right? That, yeah. That is true. Well, yeah. on another note, Tier, what a, you had a 
or have a role with Black Rifle Coffee. Yeah. And have had played a role at Black Rifle Coffee. Several roles. Several roles, yeah. right? Currently, you're in like a... So I'm in philanthropy. Uh, and specifically what I handle is special operations and conservation. Mm -hmm. So special operations, there are a myriad of nonprofits, uh, that have been established since 9-11. Um, and uh, a lot of them focus on special operations. So it's kind of my job to figure out which ones we're going to, uh, put some, put some weight behind. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of financial support or even coffee, the hardest thing is like getting a, a body somewhere. Right. Uh, any, any kind of physical presence. If there's a physical presence, it honestly, it, it a lot of times it's me historically, mm-hmm. but not always. Like we just cut a check to, uh, special forces foundation, um, and it was for 60000 And the reason we did that specifically is because that's what they requested to fund a, a mental health app that that is on the App Store now. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. So if you're a Green Beret and you're seeing this, Special Forces Foundation, just put that in the search bar, hit that, and uh, it's all anonymous, which is why a lot of soft guys don't seek any kind of mental health support is because right. they don't want to hurt their clearance yada yada command say oh we'll back you up but it a lot of it is lip service right yeah so <clears throat> so we we helped that uh but in the presentation we did that at the uh in dallas two weeks ago at the pbr kid rock and rodeo which was a lot of fun that's mm-hmm. cool yeah it was a lot of fun kid rock came out in a it was the Tesla the, the truck. Tesla, the truck. What? Yeah, it was a General yeah. Lee Tesla truck. And who was it? It was Jelly Roll and um, Bo, Bo Duke. Duke. Bo, the really? original was Bo Duke was yeah. driving it. Yeah. What? Yeah. That sounds awesome. That sounds yeah. super It was a awesome. cyber truck that had the 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 General Lee theme yeah. going on. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we, huh. uh, yeah, we presented that there and, uh, you know, Matt was there and, and Clint trial, uh, Clint's an awesome dude. So was Matt, but they, uh, they got up there to present the check, nice. which was pretty awesome hmm. because the more we can amplify, um, the organization, you know, the better mm-hmm. in, in my book. Well, yeah. Uh, Cause it's, it's not just a check, you know, for, I mean, it is, but at the same time, like you guys are bringing light to that cause. Yeah. And the more people that see that and wanted to help donate or like, oh, that's great. We can we can also donate. Yeah. It's, it's even better. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, executive director and I, uh, you know, that the thing I was talking about, the team week, we were that's where we met. We were on the same selection team in team week. Hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And he's a retired SF Sergeant Major now because he's smart. <laughs> I'm still plugging away for some reason. <laughs> so how long? How long do you think you're gonna? Are you gonna do this until you you can't do it anymore? <clears throat> I think that's where I'm at now, honestly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll if everything goes right with my paperwork, I should be out this time next year. Okay. Com- completely done. Yeah. And that will be the retirement tier. Yeah. Of abilities being in the service, it, yeah, it gets to a point until another civil war breaks out. <laughs> right, <laughs> and that's then what I tell we them, need like, tier. tier. We need yeah, tier. They're, they're gonna pick up the red phone. Yeah. Get me tier. Yeah, yeah. The back alley surgeon <laughs> is <My> needed. God, <laughs> <laughs> these uh, dicks are dirty. Uh, <laughs> Get me tier. Side. Someone needs to clean these horses. <laughs> Someone needs to clean these horse dicks. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one man. <laughs> I love how we could joke about it. It's great. Yeah. yeah. So as long as you know nothing gets stupid with North Korea, or Russia, or China, oh, or gosh, Iran. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. We'll see after November. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Election years are weird. Election years are weird. I was in. Um, I was in Al Assad. I had. Uh, I was doing this job as a civilian special forces medic. I was an analyst. Uh, based out of Al Assad, I was attached to a combat support hospital, and my job was to collect atmospheric information. Hmm. That doesn't mean like weather. I was it's just say, like, what does that mean? 
That's a good question. Just it sounds out, like a fucking outside, government job. Just, yeah. Is that just outside information, basically? Is Nebulous. What you're trying to say? Yeah, yeah. Basically, I, you're touching buttholes. <laughs> no, what, Jesus? <laughs> for sure. I, I mean, that's part of what I do as an 18 Delta. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But yeah. uh, I touched very few buttholes. Okay. On that trip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just casting a net, essentially. You know, if information yeah. comes in, you you're putting it into report. One of the coolest things I did out there that year is uh, I got a tasking from Baghdad um, to find out anything I could on this uh, American pilot that had gone down, an F-16 pilot that had gone down outside Fallujah. And uh, at the time, I was having a really hard time getting to Fallujah um, between weather and uh, the battle space owner not really wanting to do anything because... <sighs> <laughs> because Obama, that would have been funny if I had Belgian or Obama. <laughs> you should have. <laughs> because Obama had just won the election. Yeah. And so, you know, everybody that was actually in charge of anything didn't want to prove anything new because they wanted to wait till he came in to figure out what his strategy was going to be. Huh. Meanwhile, I still have work to do. Right. So, yeah, you can't be pussyfooting around <laughs> while the that right. shit's going on. It's like, I got a job to do and I'm yeah. not here. I mean, I'm, 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 my office was in the basement of this, basically a dungeon. It was, it felt like a dungeon. It yeah. was some, I mean, they swabbed it and everything to make sure like there was, it wasn't like a chemical depot or something, oh, but it was definitely like a holdover. There was a door that was blown open by our guys, like, oh, three. Yeah. Anyway. I'm so sure every door was blown open. You got back AIDS then. for sure. Yeah, yeah. this is. <laughs> yeah, got the Iraqi AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be part of the Pack Act. Oh, I have to get my friends at Hunter Seven on that. <laughs> yeah, got the Iraqi AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I did all this stuff uh, essentially remotely, and uh, it really requires like some montage music to really put it all together because I ended up tasking out like this marine intel unit for like some detailed imagery of where the, the plane crash was and there just happened to be a platoon of marine infantry out in Fallujah that was out there on patrol anyway so I had them do like the space balls thing and you know comb the desert right and uh, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm doing all this <laughs> intel link intellipedia all these databases I'm pulling up all these other reports and just compiling them and I put all this shit together and I sent it back up to to my hire in Baghdad and he sent it up to whoever the requester was and I get this like huge attaboy two weeks later uh, from an agency called JPRA Joint Personnel Recovery Agency turns out they were the ones that requested the the report the, or the information and this is like the most detailed report they'd had about this down pilot hmm. you were talking about government bureaucracy and whatnot. mm-hmm most of the information I pulled, aside from like the Marines coming in the desert and the new map, was from JPRA reports that were already out there. I just took the information and compiled it into one report really? and pulled it in, put it together. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You're the human Google. Yeah. 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 Except yeah. So he's the new AI. <clears throat> in short, yes, I can type. Perfect. <laughs> that is I retract my previous statement. <laughs> took a whole bunch of jumble of information and put it into one giant thing i apologize to all those burly tattooed men who took offense to my <laughs> typing comment they're, they're pushing up their glasses right please now. But yeah they're, i have readers in my pocket they're they, 2.0 they can't hear you they're too busy typing yeah. angry letters <laughs> yeah, i'm on my way to kill you right now they're on facebook i hope we have a lot of comments on this one yeah please please don't kill me i have yard work to do tomorrow <sighs> how tall are you six four they did you know they stacked you at that high I oh, did. I've seen yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. surprisingly, I'm, I was 285. I'm down to 278 ish right now. Most of it's metal. The rest of it's fat, but, uh, you know, I'm doing my best. I know? don't even count six pounds. Yeah. No, no, not really. Not what? unless it's super consistent just because I feel like I, I feel like I fluctuate that much between a, a good turd and a good hike up a hill. Yeah. That's very, that's, that's fair. That's a that very factual fair. statement. Yeah. yeah. 
Like, I feel like I can swing 10 pounds pretty easy. Yeah. That's why they say don't weigh yourself in the afternoon. Yeah. Don't weigh yourself in the morning. Oh, I'm 300 pounds in the afternoon. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know because there's no scale next to my couch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Between the couch and the beach. Yeah. Scale is your worst enemy. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want those around. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Well... Let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the current event stuff that we need to talk about. Oh, uh, boy. Chris just went down to Olympia mm. for a special meeting. This is about Spring Bear? Uh, this is com- it something, has com- something to do with it. It kind of does. Ties it ties in it, a little bit. It all ties bit. in. Right? Okay. Um, tell us about that, Chris. So uh, we, have some, we have some friends at Sportsman's Alliance who uh, have been – fighting on our behalf they have two new hired attorneys which are super nice guys got to meet them and we went down to uh the supreme court hearing it was a it wasn't like at the main like you know that you see in the pictures like i, I like think I like the white house looking yeah court building. Yeah, yeah it was like it was being remodeled or some shit i don't know no, it wasn't and at the Capitol building. No, so we went in this like. Was it like some portable next door or what? No, it was. It was like <laughs> it was a fair. I mean, it was like 20, 30 minutes away. So I drive to. It was. I don't remember where it was at, but we go to this building. Nice looking building. You go in, and we're in this tiny little room, and there was like thirty people in there total. And this is this, this Supreme is Court. Supreme Court. Yeah. There's one that's like Simpson style on a TV screen, phoning in. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like eight other judges sitting here and I'm sitting there and I'm watching. And I remember, so I walk in a couple minutes late, big shocker. And, uh, I, and a, a guy like scans me and, uh, I put my wallet back in my pocket and he opens the door and I walk in and it's just like, that's it. That's like the whole room right there. Everyone's like, <laughs> and they're looking like, ah, oh, shit. So I'm standing there <laughs> sweating and I'm like, okay, what are you now? There's like eight chairs. They're all full. And so I sit behind the Simpsons person that's on the TV screen. No, I saw you on on the TV screen. Yeah. I was like, "What the hell is Chris doing? He's sitting right behind the person who's talking to one of yeah. the lawyers." Oh no, that was that was the second case. Oh, so okay. the first case was like uh, all of the um, municipals' sewage systems pump their shit into Puget Sound. <laughs> oh, so that that was one of the Supreme. That was the Supreme. What Court was that hearing. like two years ago? It's still going on. Oh my gosh! And they're like, uh, they're denying permits, and like we can't pump our shit. I don't know what's going on. Anyways, long story short, there was a lot of people in there for that, and then a bunch of people leave. The judges leave. Everyone comes back. The judges come back, and then some people come back. Not as many people. And so I sit down, and I'm talking to with our attorney before, and then the uh, Bob Ferguson's cronies over here with uh, Lorna Smith, which is. Yeah, we all know about that. Yeah. And uh, I won't get into that. And so I sit down and I'm listening. And it's like, it's very clear and cut. Because this case have been, has been gone through and it, and decided, right? Right. Like this, we cl- is, this is this an very appealed close. case. It, yeah. Right? So Bob appealed Ferguson. Bob Ferguson. Bob Ferguson. Himself. Himself appealed this case to piss away uh, the taxpayers' money. That's you guys. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks for paying for this for no reason because Bob Ferguson's a great human being. <laughs> and then Sportsman's Alliance is like, hey, we'll do it anyways. Let's go back and keep fighting. We've already mm-hmm. won once. So they uh, they send the uh, Bob Ferguson crony at first, and he's like, hey, let's talk about these words. And they want to like – it'd be like if I went in and said, hey, tear the sky is blue. And you'd be like, well, Chris, actually, what is the sky? Let's talk about that word, the sky. Let's talk about buttered sausage. Let's talk about (laughs) buttered sausage. That's, dear, that is so on point. It's not even funny. That's exactly, Gary Busey could be in there arguing these cases. It'd be the same exact thing. It's so freaking stupid. It's so dumb. It's the most, if, why am I here? I'm sitting there and I'm like starting to sweat. I'm so irritated at the, the, the idiocracy that happens in these cases. And and literally they sat there and argued for like a half an hour over what words mean. What words mean, yeah. Yeah. As if it's not like written out and pretty much clear to I'm, everybody. They're citing I mean, it's like black and white. I so mean, which which case are we talking about? So <laughs> pretend I've been in Iraq for a year. So, <laughs> so rewind back Lor- to Lorna Smith, 
who's on the Washington State Fishing Game Commission, yeah, was the head of um, taking away our spring bear, right? Right. Okay. So she's a she's a horrible person, mm-hmm. and uh, and not just yeah, that. Like she's, been, she's spearheading she's trying to a lot of remove mountain lion hunting. She's yeah. spearheading she's very to, very anti basically anything hunting. to do with predator pro predator. Yeah. Less hunting. Mm-hmm. anti-hunting so she right. decides that she's going to take all hunting away from from washingtonians because she's a great human being and so she does this illegally because she's not supposed to be there because she holds another position with the humane society no or it was some a, other it's a, it was no, she some was on city. a city. It was like some, a county commission. Yeah, something like that. It right. It says you can't hold multiple positions. Positions in in a elected like an elected position. Yeah. Um, as an officer, right? And she did so illegally, appointed by Jay Inslee, who's also a horrible person. <laughs> and um, we were just like, hey, you did this illegally. Like, like, hey, give us our spring beer back, or get rid of her, or do whatever, right? You did a bad thing. You got caught. Fess up, right? Bob Ferguson's like, you know what? I'm going to double down on being a shithead and uh, keep pushing back. And so we go there, and I'm listening to this guy talk about, like, the the minute. He's pulling stuff from, like, well, you know, in 1882 or some stupid shit, right? He's out of the, out of the sky type stuff. And you mean back like when University of Washington became yes became registered because they hired a bunch of hookers to sit in the seats. <laughs> that's that's a fair point, Tier. Yeah. That's a fair point. Uh, by the way, uh, Tier for governor. If uh, true, that's true a story, T Y R. I did not make that up. That is yeah. a true story. Is that really a true <laughs> story? That's a true story. Yeah. Holy yeah. moly! Uh, you know, it's it's super. It's, and drunks and loggers. Yeah, really. It wasn't just hookers. Yeah. I'm not surprised about the loggers, though. That doesn't surprise me one bit. Go purple and gold. Yeah. Go dogs. Go, per- go dogs. There's a reason they're called dogs. Yeah. Uh, yeah so it was, a, it, was a, it was a total mess. It was a total shit show. It's a total waste of time. Total waste of taxpayers' money. Like a ridiculous waste of money. And and us, too, because we have, we're fighting this bullshit. Yeah, we're paying for it, you too. Know? We're paying yeah, for it double. Because we already won, sides. and then it got appealed, and now we're going back to court, and yeah. she's still sitting in office doing her job, still trying to mess everything up. It's mm-hmm. just a total shit show, and we're still fighting it. And you know? it's if I was – so looking at looking at it from the Sportsman's Alliance side of things, like you have to – you talk about like the bureaucracy you have to deal with and the politics and how ridiculous it is. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at it going, this company, Sportsman's Alliance, has to pay to fly out here, have their attorneys – we have to fight this, this, this ridiculous appeal. Like it's so ridiculous. It makes no sense. It's so black. But and white legally, already. they get to do it. And Bob Ferguson knows, like, hey, we're gonna piss away some more of the Sportsman's Alliance money, mm-hmm. and you know, f them because he's a horrible, horrible person, and just decides that, like, hey, you know, if we just keep chipping away at these hunters, we're gonna get them. Because mm-hmm. they're going to run out of money eventually. And guess what? I'll just keep working more. And I'll keep making more money. I'll keep donating more money. And I'm coming for Bob Ferguson because I <laughs> hate that guy. He is such he's such a bad person for Washington. He's yeah. a horrible person for Washington. And they don't, then they don't, they like, it's, you look, not to get off topic, but you look at like all of the, the predator attacks on people right now. Uh, there was a fatality in California and, uh, you know, black bear and cougar, and you Google it across the United States, and people are dying left and right and getting attacked left and right. And mm-hmm. then you have people like Lorna and Bob Ferguson. They're like, you know what we should do? We should bring in more predators, and we should not hunt them, and yeah. we should stop everything. And they're, it's just yeah, like, yeah. it's it's absolutely... Now we're introducing grizzly bears. It's mind-boggling. I like to look at it from the glass-half-full perspective in that this is the only way that's going to... That, that urban sprawl is really going to stop. And, uh, you know people that aren't afraid to carry a gun with them Mm -hmm. probably will be okay. But if, if you're relying completely on tolerance and Disney movies or bear spray, which doesn't (laughs) always work. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. Yeah. You mean, you mean, Hot sauce. Yeah, so, exactly. so <laughs> what Deer is saying is this is like uh, survival of the fittest. Yeah, uh, that's a, that's a yeah, good point. They're really it's only getting worse because it's not just eugenics. up in you know the wilderness. Like you're hearing all these stories down like in rural areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
like not too long ago, I had a guy come in and gave us a class and he was talking about, he lived locally in Kirkland and he said that there's big cats roaming around all over the place wreaking havoc. Yeah. The other side of that though is, I mean, like BC is dealing with this in that, uh, I, I was just watching whatever it is. The British thing is that they do when they stand on either side and they kind of yell at each other. <laughs> I, right. Yeah. yeah part, I, part, by the way, I love that. And, and probably went like Trudeau, and it's like, well, the other side says this, and then Trudeau stands up and he's like, well, my mom said. Yeah. <laughs> my dad, Castro. I mean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I love that. By the way, <clears throat> somebody was uh, that seems to be more aligned with with our way of thinking stood up in whatever BC's version of of that shouting at each other thing is. And uh, and said uh, essentially that BC was wasting taxpayer money in that they shut down. They had the, they had a, a bear infestation. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, they had shut down bear hunting. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? This might have just been deer. It's it's an animal. It's Some an kind animal. of animal. <laughs> deer attack. Some kind of large game. We're getting there. Infestation. Yeah. We're gonna walk either, them rounds right. Bear in there. deer. I don't know. Google it. It's it's there. Google yeah. Canadians shouting at each other in British Columbia. Well, sure I know they they shut down grizzly bear hunting. South Park yeah. is gonna pop up. Yeah. 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 Hey guy. <laughs> I'm not your guy, buddy. <laughs> 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 make a South Park episode out of it. <laughs> so anyway, the point is, this guy was yelling about that. He, the, the point he was making was the, they shut down hunting, and then it created an overpopulation, and then the government then had to hire, at the expense of a couple million, yep. professional hunters to come out to reduce this population, mm-hmm. when all they really had to do was issue hunting licenses. Yeah, yep. which is exactly what's That's happened here. Yeah. So California, this is it's a big debate that's going issue, on right, yeah. right now, right? So Colorado is on the brink of they're introducing a ballot initiative to remove mountain lion. What was it? Mountain lion, lynx, and something else. Other, just basically predators mm. off of the big game hunting seasons. So they'd be essentially removing cat what hunting it, completely. No way. No, I don't think it was cats. I think it was bobcat, <laughs> lynx. Su- it, was bob- it was bobcat, yeah. lynx, and mountain lion. Oh, okay. So the three cats. Which lynx isn't hunted anyway, so I don't no. know why that, yeah. that would be on the initiative. But they're thinking maybe we'll have a season someday for that. But anyways, so that sparked this whole topic of what happens when cat hunting is shut down. Well, California shut down cat hunting back in the, I think it was in the 90s. It was either late 80s, early 90s that they, sh- they took away mountain lion hunting in California. And then they have stats of how many lions were killed during the hunting season from hunters. Mm-hmm. And it was like, what was it, Chris? Like three, 300. 300 cats a year or something like that. And since that time, every year it's been about 300 cats that have been killed. But they're not being killed by hunters. They're being killed by s- state and federal employees on behalf of public safety or nuisance or livestock or whatever. So the moral of the story is you can take away the hunting from hunters. And then all you do is just add another bill to the taxpayers, pay someone else to just waste it and not use it and throw it in the dump or leave it lie where it is versus using it and consuming it, which makes zero sense. Yeah. And so we know, and we had that happen firsthand this last year at the beginning of when cat season opened that the state went out and hired. Oh yeah. Yeah. Perfect example. Yeah. You took know? my freaking cat away. <laughs> yeah. Took your kitty cat away. There was at least three of them. Yep. Yeah. That were taken away. Well, I mean, it, it happens so much. Like if you, uh, watch the, the cougar, uh, what is that? It's like the cougar confrontation yeah, yeah. site or whatever for Washington. Yeah. It's daily, right? Yeah. There's, yeah. there's either a lethal mm. removal or, uh, some sort of like self defense or something that happens almost every day. Or a cougar yeah. runs in your backyard and tries to kill your dog. Yeah. Oh, that happened there. at Fort Bragg recently, but that the cougar was a uh, Chechen. Chechen? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Hey, yeah, that jokes. This is good. This is good. We're going to keep going. This is going to be We're going to keep going. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> Yep. 
So yeah, that just happened in Monroe, where a cougar ran in through someone's backyard. No, it was like on their patio. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and, they, were, and they were sitting, sitting in the backyard, backyard yeah. Yeah, with their infant baby. Yeah. On her lap, and then the cougar just like came up, and then it like started to go for for like a split second, but then the cat ran off, and yeah. it like chased the cat. This but like wild. this kind of shit happens like all the time, all the time. And what these people that are, you know, proposing these changes don't take into account is like human safety, population numbers and all this shit. It's like, yeah, it sounds great. Let's just close it. Right. And then everything will go back to normal. And like the circle of life will happen and Lion King will all, all happen. And yeah. the, all the animals will all talk to each other and it'll be great. <laughs> but that's just not reality. Right. Like. There's a lot of death and there's a lot of moving factors in management. And if you don't have it, death, it's death is, is involved in everything. That's just like, how's everything. it going to happen? You know, like if we want to pay the state to do it and pay outside hunters to do it, you know, or we can, you know, profit off of it. Right. And stick to it. Like, I wish there wasn't profit, but the thing is like, hunting's in my dna it's who i am it's deep down like i'm gonna hunt and i'm gonna fish and i'm gonna grow food and that's who i am and i'm gonna do that whether the state allows me to do that or not all right if it came down to it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like that's just who i am and i'll pay for it legally mm -hmm. or if we hit the civil war part or whatever we're gonna do i don't know what's gonna happen this but should I, be a fun one you know i, I <laughs> I feel like, I really do feel like us as hunters, right? I think all of us sitting here, right, have that, like, hunter DNA in us. Mm -hmm. And if you take that away, number one, how are we going to get our food? And number two, now you have all this unregulated predator population and undulate population. And, and they'll work its way out for a little bit, for sure, Right. But then it's going to end up like the biologist that James and I just talked to out on the island, uh, out of the San Juan Islands, and a deer population became so robust on an island that they got a disease, and the entire population died off. Mm -hmm. So we can wait till disease gets them. Yeah. Yeah. And he just attributed that to the population got too high. Yeah. The numbers were too high. They were too close together. There was It was just bound to... And then they, it's and just they too much incest probably, yeah. and it's a lot and of it's it's a horrible, yeah. horrible thing, right? Like it's either it's either starvation because they eat all the food, mm -hmm. right, or some sort of disease, which I don't know. Like I'm not a big fan of disease. It probably hurts a little bit, you know, when you <laughs> die from it. I yeah. would think, you know, but maybe maybe Peta thinks otherwise. I don't know, you know. Maybe I don't think, think Peta does a lot of thinking. Period, so. Oh, they're the smartest people on the planet. Just look at their YouTube page. You know, like the the best. Save the animals. Yeah. <laughs> what, how's that going? Sad music inserted here. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, too much. Okay. No, never. Okay. Never ever. Well, we're getting off rails here, Doug. Yeah, sorry. Well, Chris, why don't you talk about what we got here on the table? Yeah, so... Uh, oh, it's my gift. Tear. <laughs> Tear is going home with a whole pile of Coors Lights cans that are empty. <laughs> Congratulations, Tear. Uh, we like you enough to Hey, I'm from you. Oregon. These are worth a nickel each, yeah, you know? Right? Five cents <laughs> a piece. You, you can have them. You can have them, buddy. You're going to go away with about $30,000 worth of cans tonight. <laughs> it just cost me 25000 in <laughs> gas to get right. to Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, I love it. So, um, kind of compiling on our our uh, our local builds that we're doing, we're doing some custom rifles this year, and uh, Timney, which is probably the closest trigger company to us, I would think. They're kind of like Phoenix, the only Arizona ones I know area. About, so. Yeah, yeah. So I've run I've run Timneys for I don't know, well, since the shops opened thirteen years. Um, and they've been fantastic. I'm a big fan of their triggers. Uh, we put them in all of our, um, you know, our our AR builds. <laughs> we put them in our like our SWAT sniper builds. We put them in our long range rifle builds. I mean, every there's really and in, in to to back that up a little bit. We've tried a bunch of other companies, like, and I'm not going to name these companies, and they're not bad, but we've had issues, 
and failures with those companies. Mm -hmm. And the only failure I've ever had with the Timney is when I went to go smash a pin through a receiver and literally like smash a trigger because I didn't line it up appropriately after a night of too many uh, sodi pops. So uh, <laughs> big fan, big, big fan of Timney. And they sent us um, three different triggers. We have their uh, their 510 V2, which is a version two of their 510. We have their hit trigger, and then we also have their brand new Remington 700 trigger, which actually comes in the new Remington 700s, which is a massive upgrade. 100%. So I'm seeing the difference between uh, both those say Remington 700 on it, the 510 V2 and the Impact 700. What's, what's the difference? So the... Like the V2, so if we were like, if we were rating them, right? Mm -hmm. So like, this is the fancy one. Like this is your Ferrari. The right? hit. Yeah, the hit. Like um, in my, uh, I like a really light trigger pull in my rifle builds. And I like zero creep. Like I don't want an ounce of creep. No drag, no gravel road, no none of that. And I like a really crisp light trigger pull. Um, this is typically what I will run. Now, the V2 is very similar to that. Um, it won't go down as light in poundage than the hit yeah, will. This one says eight ounces to two pounds. Yeah. like Oh, wow. Pull. Okay. Yeah. So super light, right? And yeah. I think that one says, what, two to four? Yeah. And in a lot of the, we run a lot of the 510 V2s in probably like 90% of our builds. Mm -hmm. You know, um, two to two and a half pounds yeah. is, what, is what we usually run them in. And then they have their their new uh, Remington trigger, which runs a little bit heavier, but still, I think a lot of guys like James, for instance, are used to this. This is kind well, of not not even that. Not the so maybe you're used to used to a little heavier trigger pull, but you're used to the gravel road, like you're used to the creep, you're used mm -hmm. to the pull. Like you pull the trigger and it doesn't go off, right? Right. The thing is, like it's like a they like a good visual is like a glass rod, right? Like when it breaks, it breaks. Like there's no creep. There's, there's no flex. There's no bend in it. Mm -hmm. Right. When you pull the trigger and when it breaks, the gun goes off. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot. Like I think Tyr can attest to this. It's like where you capitalize on a lot of your accuracy is that when the gun goes off, there's no anticipation. There's no flinch, you know? Right. And that's where a lot of shooters will. That's, there's a downfall. It's yeah, it'll scary. it'll it'll be a huge downfall because that you know you that anticipation and that flinch will mm -hmm. get you you know the guys that blow the legs off a deer are the flinchers right because mm -hmm. they're pulling 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 the triggers coming 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 uh, and then they go and then yeah. and then you hit them in the in the old knee right in the old deer kneecap you know <laughs> the old so I just blame that over because it you know has to go through the the hood scoop. <laughs> okay 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 dear all right okay uh, all right i can see that I've seen, seen that a few times <laughs> i have not done it but i've seen it a few times I'm, i may or may not have seen that as well yeah that's a, that's a fair point yep but uh yeah looking forward to, to shooting um like i said i've i've shot timmy's for a long time i'm really excited to put these uh in the new builds that we have with uh, so far, we have the uh, American Rifle Code, the brand new Coup de Gras mm -hmm. Hunter Hybrid, lightweight, which is a big deal. Yep. Um, we got the Lou Pold Scopes coming. Really excited about Rocking that. And the VX6s. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're going to be putting some VX6s on them mm -hmm. and uh, some benchmark barrels. Some benchmark carbon barrels, carbon fiber barrels. The gain twist. The gain twist. So, yep. um, Ron over at Benchmark was on. If you guys go back to episode, it was the season. Whatever it was, watch the whole season. Probably five or six. Well, if you don't, if you guys don't know about cut gain twist barrels, it's pretty interesting science. Like, I mean, it how was, far it they, was way over my head. The Me thing and is, James were sitting here. Just I was looking like, at Doug like I have no idea what they're talking about, but it sounds awesome. It sounds Thanks cool. For the yeah. barrels, Ron. <laughs> it's re it's really exciting. It's a, it's literally a science and an art. Like you gotta, you gotta be able to cut these barrels. Like I said, they're not they're not button pulled, right? And they're mm -hmm. they're cut and gain twist. So you you say you start like 
you know, at whatever speed, like I think we're shooting, we're going to shoot 300 PRCs and I'm, I'm trying to remember what, what twist we started out at. But anyways, long story short, when the, bu- so when the bullet comes out of your, of your cartridge, it will come out at a slower speed and it will gain twist as the bullet goes down the barrel because if you shoot, if say for for instance, if you have a really really hot cartridge and it comes out and your twist is too fast, it will literally pull your bullet apart, and your right. bullet will just you know go to shit, right? Because you're trying to get the the maximum out of that cartridge. So if we want to shoot a big huge heavy bullet, we want to start it slow and spin it faster as it comes out the end of the barrel. And now you can do that with all this. I don't even know how it works. It's mm. crazy technology. It's going to be really exciting. I'm super excited. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's going to be a great like what we we called it the Northwest build. So yeah, yeah. all Northwest companies have jumped in on this and we're going to have some pretty sweet 300 pre RCs. You can make sure you clean the bean out of the end of the barrel. Oh, well, we'll be well, cleaning the beans. For tears, sure. tears going to be a free agent here in a year and maybe we'll have him be our uh, bean cleaner. You know, yeah. <laughs> I've heard he's pretty good at cleaning those beans. Can't, can't roll outdoors. will be hiring. I'll be looking for you. You know, I'll take your CV, you know, uh, co- co- uh, <laughs> I don't know what the V is for. Is that... <laughs> so let me ask you uh, a gunsmithing question. Mm-hmm. Years and years ago, I was going through uh, this uh, uh, urban warfare course, and I was at a, I was an indoor facility in uh, Ogden, Utah, and they had a pro shop there, and I picked up this. Everything I just told you is irrelevant to the story. Uh, I like the I like the I yeah, like the meat. You need to though. lead it into yeah, it, right? yeah. maybe some spice. Yeah, you and Chris tell stories the same. I love it. <laughs> yeah, the long there's, there's a lot of winding. It road. better be thirty minutes. Dude. Yeah, it's a long road. And so, then go. I, uh, forgot, I, don't know, I, I don't forgot know, what I was I don't saying. know if we got thirty minutes of time left. So. Lay it on me, Terry. So, so I bought this uh, this uh, Remington 700, 300 Win Mag. Okay. Yeah. Great uh, choice, by the way. It's just stock off the shelf. Yeah, yeah. And then it sat in a gun safe for years, years and years and years. And then classic. You know, I bounced around the country a little bit. My guns were in Texas at my, my parents' place. I was overseas. I uh, came back. I went on this uh, this hunting trip, uh, this elk trip, with uh, with Josh Smith and some some of the guys. Uh, this was two years ago. And the, the 300 mag was all I had in my house mm-hmm. in terms of things to hunt with. So I went out there, and I'm on Josh's property. Uh, and trying to set this thing in because I'd never actually had any rounds through it. I've, I've had this thing for like 10, 12 years. Never had any rounds through it. Could not sight that thing in to save my life. Really? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I mentioned that my signature block used to say worst sniper at Black Rifle Coffee. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I'm still, you know, right. pretty... You're still a pretty uh, good yeah. shot. I'm still a good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. good shot. Yeah, yeah. And uh, these guys are starting to lose some confidence in me. So I ended up buying like this Mossberg 6.5 uh, out of a local sporting goods store and you know redeemed myself because that thing was fine. Right. But this thing, I've, I've heard that post, like after Remington sold, yeah, yeah. the rifles kind of went to shit. So let me ask you this question. When you say you couldn't get it sighted in, like what type of group was it holding? No group. No group. Just all over the place. Like, all over the place. Like like a like a twelve inch group at hundred yards. What are we talking? I would say at least twelve. Like okay. one shot. One shot would be on the paper and one would be great, and then the next shot would be like, where did it hit? It's gone. I don't think I hit anything that was point in point impact. Really? Yeah. Mm. I would. Say, so typically, what happens is, and the action on this thing sucks. By the way, it is. I don't know. It, it feels like a a rifle. I. It feels like an artifact. Like I've, I've shot Afghan, right? Yeah, yeah. Mosin Nagants that had yeah, better yeah. action than this. My my, in my, in my experience, typically, like if it holds a six inch group or tighter, it's a terrible rifle or terrible terrible ammo. Right? Yeah, it could be either. And, and guns can be very picky. The ammo was great, right? Yeah. It was not so. Sweet. So I've had, yeah. I've built, um, so. For instance, I had a guy from uh, Northside Metro SWAT. I built him a rifle. 
he shot. He goes, Chris, your gun shoots You'll like have shit. In this for sure. Yeah, and I'm like, oh no, what's? Because I built like four exact rifles all at once. Yeah, gave them a couple of them shot great. His shot terribly, and I go, well, geez, I don't know. Let well, let me take a look, right? Because like I always back all of my rifles, hundred percent. Like yeah. it doesn't matter. He brings it back, and I'm like, God, I'm looking at it. I'm like, man, everything's tight. Tolerance is tight. Everything's perfect. Like, we're talking like within one thou, right, at mm -hmm. least. And he goes, it's shooting a three-inch group at 100 yards. I go, that's ridiculous. That's horrible. And then he switches ammo, and it shot a he shot a bunch of ammo. But he went from three inches to 0.17-inch group just with ammo, right? Yeah. So that was a huge difference. But that's so that's from three inch to basically one hole. Right. Right. Now, when you're talking twelve inches, typically, what we see is there's some sort of defect. Either you have like a a, a major mating issue between, say, your stock and your barreled action. Like that, that's what I think. It's moving around, yeah. and or you have a major if you, which is typically um, the scope rings mating bay if you have a picatinny rail and rings or if you have tally bases that, that mount directly to it it's a it's either a scope issue or a mating issue between some sort of your scope and base mm -hmm. that's moving because to move that far yeah at 100 yards is catastrophic yeah i mean that's a lot i had 1954 chicom ak that did that but you know mm. that's just a that's, that's like shoot, for trick shots that's like shooting a shovel yeah <laughs> you know it's made for peasants yeah like <laughs> yeah when people bring ak's in my, in my shop i hand them a shovel and go here you go i fixed it i mean it was it was reliable around it was, walk out it was consistently door. inconsistent i knew yeah. that every third round was a wild card it was like don't be next to whoever I'm shooting. You know, yeah. it's, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> when you shake your gun, it sounds like a bag of Legos. You're like, oh, geez, okay, this, yep, this is a good one. This is a good one. What does it shoot? It shoots anything. It doesn't yeah. matter. Just point yeah. in that general it direction. It shoots great. Yeah. Just yeah. don't be downrange. Yeah. yeah. Don't be in the wrong end of it. Yeah. Don't be on the wrong end. Hundred percent. But I would love to have one of your guns in the shop. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it up. Yeah. Chris will fondle your guns. Between sure. between me and old gunsmith Cliff, we can get it figured out. Yeah. Yeah, we can get it figured out. We're figured pretty out handy. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Then I've got a 6.5 PRC that needs to get sighted in, too. I'm a big fan. I'm not going to lie. I'm a big fan of the PRC. I know that... Uh, uh, the old Creamor gets a lot. Of oh, a lot of hate. hate. Tons yeah. of hate. You know what's funny about that is 10 years ago, the sniper community was on fire. For the for the six five Creed the Creedmoor, yeah, and now it just Everyone gets was. It, it you know there's pride flags around it and, <laughs> and whatnot and dude we <laughs> haven't helped with that movement either I'm gonna I'm gonna be completely honest I'm gonna be, I'm gonna come <laughs> yeah, clean we're here we're totally in that boat I'm gonna I'm gonna come clean <laughs> here under the bus yeah uh, it's like Creed right <laughs> we're home sweat over <laughs> dude I love Creed bro yeah you love do love him I'm gonna give him shit though. And I you love, love Creed more. Else? Oh yeah. yeah, and I love Creed more. And I have here's the deal: I have a bunch of Creed Moors. Yeah, because I shoot great, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the deal: like anyone can shoot a Creed more. There's no recoil. Like it's a uh, they say it's inherently accurate. Well, there's no recoil, and it's got a high BC bullet, so you get away with a lot of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And it's super easy to shoot. But the problem is, is these guys that go out and be like, I'm going to shoot an elk at 400 yards, and I don't know how to shoot. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to shoot it in the shoulder. Well, buddy, you know, like, yep. I'm just saying. You just mm, gave him the French tickler. He's gone. Golly, you know, you're messing it up for the rest of us, you know. Mm -hmm. like, So there's nothing wrong with that round when used properly, right? It's just the guys that are like, oh, I'm going to go shoot an elk at 1,000 yards. Like, dude, bro, come on. And then they shoot in the shoulder, and you're like, yeah. I don't know what happened. Or I hit it, I'll hit a little high in the yeah. no man's land, or yeah. Where I mean, 300 Ultra Mag, you hit it, and you hit it in the shoulder, or you hit it a little high, or you hit it a little low, or you hit it in the guts, or you hit going it right wherever to the it's, ground. it's down. Where, Tier, I don't know if you've ever listened to our podcast, which you shouldn't, but 
<laughs> we we love the 30 cal. We are a firm believer of you can't kill it too much. You can never kill something too much. I don't know, but it's par for the course with me. I mean, my first printed article, story, whatever, my, uh, my editor for that one, former comm cam guy, former infantryman, former comm cam for, uh, for the Marine Corps, got a bachelor's in journalism from Syracuse and a master's in communications from University of Oregon. He's been a ghostwriter on some books. He's, he's legit. He knows what he's doing. He says, hey, I want you to write something. I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, what? He's like, uh, I don't know. I was with him when he f- shot his first year at Montana. And uh, he goes, write that, uh, right about the time you shit your pants. <laughs> Jesus. Like, what? He was like, yeah, no, no, the, the shit your, the thing Willie said. I said, you can shit your pants twice a year before you lose school points? He's like, yeah. I said, <laughs> All right, so I just want to make it clear that you, as my editor, you want my very first, like, my breakout thing to be about shitting my pants. He's like, yeah, I think you'll... That's a real (laughs) day. I think you'll put a good spin on it. I think you'll kill it. That's a real real barn burner, buddy. Go ahead and do it. Uh, So that's what it was. And then my second one, which was a full feature spread in Field Ethos magazine, was about being a stripper and having this bill (laughs) cramped in my ass crack. (laughs) Son, how did I miss that? <laughs> how did the real question is how did that make it into the field ethos journal? Dude, because oh, it's man. a great publication. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, yeah. Not That's not okay. just like a blip, like it full like full, full, feature? De- full spread. Like full yeah. spread. I went full. under the name Mike Concha. <laughs> oh man, I spread my butt cheeks and everything. They That's got, you to know. They got Chris Hunt to do the art for it because obviously there's no photos of any of that. <laughs> Allegedly, oh, my God. Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. You can imagine. A good one. It's a good one. Well, Doug, should we, I was going to say, should we wrap that we're up? We're probably running out of time on we're the getting close. card here. Yeah, we'd like to thank Tier for coming out and doing a podcast yeah. with us. It's Thanks for the time. beers and, you know, the new trigger. And... <laughs> That's Heck right. yeah, bro. <laughs> you can have all the well, Bear Hunters Life t shirts you want. <laughs> uh, we'd also like hat. to you thank our Doug's sponsors. Hat. I just got Doug's this hat. hat. You yeah, have this one. I have so many hats. I'm so, glad you didn't give me a hat. We could have given you. A hat. Now we're gonna have to give yeah. him a hat. Yeah. I, what? How are we gonna give him? I don't know. Black rifle hat. Well, James's hat. hat. James is <laughs> extra large size. Ja- give him his old stuff back, James. Yeah. Uh, Here's a part of oh, your, God. your old uniform. <laughs> trying to get rid of that, but you know. <laughs> I'm excited to buy one of those hats. I'm totally gonna buy one. If well, they make they, them in when they do that one's sold out. Yeah, they have to do yeah. another run. Yeah. It it's gonna have to be powder. a plus size hat though, because that won't fit me. Not even close. Yeah. The the foam cowboy hat. Yeah. There you go. You have to do one of those big foam ones. Have you seen those? I'm height, weight, proportionate, Doug. You're the same size as me we're talking about. You're bigger than me. Doug's yeah, head but I got a little like tiny a head compared head. to you. He's got a normal size head. Yeah. yeah. At least the hat fits it's my head. the same size as me. It's okay. Calm down. You're going to come live with what me you now. Got four, you got four buttons on your hat? Yeah. I'm going to show off. I know. You can barely get one. <laughs> All right, let's he's, bring it. Let's he's got bring a it super home. We're hat. taking shots on Nick's, Chris's hands. I'm sorry. Yeah. Big, I got shots. a big head. Well, let's thank our sponsors once again Caribou Gear. Caribou Gear. Mm-hmm. Uh, Benchmark Barrels. Thank you so much. Loophold. Mm hmm. Montana Knife Company. Uh, who else? What are we missing? Uh, All American Rifle Co. Oh, can't forget them. Yep. They just gave us those new actions. Uh, All In. We and got some sweet stuff. I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, man. I hope that's it. It's gonna be a weird dubbing. I know it's gonna be something real weird. <laughs> We're hoping to bring old uh, black. We should have like a, back, so we'll see. Uh, like a we'll see how that goes. Uh, wink, yeah. wink. Wait, it, where can they find you, Tier? Oh, yeah, you know. Oh yeah. You can find me at uh, Red Leader Standing By uh, <laughs> on Instagram, and you can read my stuff on Field Ethos Journal and. Uh, occasionally coffee or die if that's still a thing i actually don't know <laughs> but uh, right. don't definitely know. field ethos journal <laughs> is there anywhere else before i forget no that sounds good that's okay just, keep it follow there. them on instagram red leader standing by yeah it's it's quality it, content it's a good laugh mm-hmm. lots of lots of horse sticks so. it's good it's good stuff <laughs> it's good stuff yeah. it's uh it's very relatable i really do think that because i chuckle every time i watch your post <laughs> 
That's so funny. He's a good guy. It's a good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. It's a good guy. Unless you're one of my exes. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Uh, Hashtag. Uh, well, until next time, guys, stay humble and hunt hard. Hunt hard.